Okay, so this is uh, chapter 10, estimating a known quantity from a sample. Uh, it's a quite straightforward uh, chapter for uh, to, uh, those of you who know about uh, density statistics. So uh, what's happening in this uh, chapter it's basically making a distinction between sampling and estimation. Uh, and so uh, I made, uh, I've used this is data, uh, which is um, uh, the data that I've used for Jon Snow, uh, data. And so if we have a look at this data, uh, um, these are, uh, it's, it's very short, uh, so quite uh, just, just a few uh, observations and a quite uh, compared to the number of observations, uh, a large number of uh, variables. Okay, so, but this is uh, uh, for, for another chapter. So, this is basically. Um, um, made of um, that there's quite a few information such as district, um, cholera depth, region, type of water. Because if we have a look at this here, like we have uh, the, the water in different areas uh, and the cholera depth. These are the two variables that we are going to have a look at. Okay. So first thing that you, what you um, ever uh, ever said, and uh, uh, that that is um, it's, it's there, uh, unless it's considered uh, exhaustive, um, it's never um, it's considered as the population, okay, as your population, okay, your, and, and you base your analysis. Um, on this population. But then uh, if you want to have a look at a sample of the population, okay, so that means that you are going to, uh, or uh, if you have a large uh, population, so if you are going to reduce your population to uh, a smaller size, or, or, so your sample will be smaller than your population, or otherwise, you can do uh, a larger sample, larger than your population. So let's just, um, if you want to jump in, interrupt me, uh, add the things, because I know you are an expert as well. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I use this um, uh, function sample, where you can specify the size, uh, if you want uh, observation to be related or not. So this is a, a type of sampling without replacement. And uh, in the book, uh, there was a, a nice uh, image that shows uh, that there are these two things. That shows the differences between the two cases. Okay, so without replacement, I have a population, and then I, for example, call for three samples, subsamples of my population. So that means that each sample that I am um, going to uh, make uh, is smaller than my population. Okay, and uh, this can be without replacement. So that uh, that means that the elements inside each sample are not um, duplicated, okay? They are unique inside the um, What happened uh, is that if we have um, a small population, okay, and we want to have a look at a different combination of this uh, small population, um, 
if we do just a sample without the replacement, uh, we are going to, so we uh, obtain samples which are even smaller than our small population. Okay, so that comes in, in uh, to Andy, the uh, option with replacement. Okay, there's many other reasons and so, but in this case, you might want to uh, add the replacement true option in the sample function. And so you have, uh, uh, you might have a replication of your uh, observation within one of the samples that you have created, but then you can uh, use this technique, even if you've got uh, um, a very small situation to start with. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. So okay. this is without replacement, for example, uh, because this cholera uh, data is made of 38 observations. So um, if I ask for, for, for a sample which is greater, I cannot uh, sample something that is not uh, in my, within my data. Okay, so I'm going to basically um, like group uh, my data in subgroups of a size which is uh, smaller than the original size. Well, um, why? If I uh, want a, 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 a bigger size, so for example, this is 38, I want uh, um, like samples, a sample of uh, a thousand. So I need to use the replacement. Okay, so this way, um, I have now um, a new, new dot thing, which is um, size of um, Uh, which is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, what I'm doing with uh, This is um, 38, 15. So um, what I did here is basically um, okay. Um, um, uh, replicating okay the uh, predictors to a larger number not the observation okay so if i do for example th this is why um if i do like because this is 30 if i do 30 this cannot be uh, done. Okay, so I have 15 um, columns. So in this case, 10 or even 14 uh, can be used, but not, uh, um, yeah. So uh, what if I want to, so basically what's happened with sample, okay. Because some, somehow it's sometimes confusing. Okay, it uh, basically produces random samples and permutation. And so take a sample of a specific of the specific size from the element of S using either with or without replacement. And so uh, this is the the syntax that we used, and we have even some examples. Okay, so this was uh, within back. Okay, so if I if I got um, okay. if I got um, just colira and 
that. Okay, so and this is it's my vector. Now, if I apply the sample function to that, and then set like size. Okay, let's let's have a look at that uh, within the length. What is this length? Which should be thirty-eight. Okay, because this is a, uh, what it is, and and so if I want to sample this to fifty, I cannot do it. But I can do a thirty sample size thirty size sample sample, or a thousand with replacement width. And so now I have uh, like random uh, number of tests, but they, uh, they are based on my original population. Okay. And so we are approaching to a theorem, uh, which is the central limit theorem, which uh, basically states that uh, starting from a population, if we grow the size of this population with um, so larger samples, uh, it's uh, more easily uh, that the mean that we uh, calculate on this new population, which is larger, will be closer to the original population. So that it, it, and this this uh, um, uh, it's more uh, goes into the estimate the value within our data. Okay, so um, obviously uh, this can be done. This is by vector. Okay, so I can use like um, can map it. Uh, with uh, the function map and apply this to the world to the entire uh, data set. Okay, but for now uh, we don't we don't do that. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, collider data. And so we have we see that we have a mean. So the the the, the number the, the mean the average number of tests is three hundred and sixty eight point six. Okay, uh, we know that thirty eight. Yeah. Erica, is yeah. that the number of deaths by uh, place, right? By district? Mm, yeah, that's district, but I didn't, uh, there is no group. It, uh, if you want to see, I need to group by uh, district and then. Um, Okay. In this case, I need to group by district, okay, and then reframe or um, uh, and calculate the average. And that is what then if I select district. Uh, you can see the uh, average number of deaths by district. Okay. okay. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, interesting thing is to have a look at the water. So there is three, three Battersea, New River, and New uh, mm -hmm. Q. Uh, and the number of uh, that 
uh, the, the minimum uh, number of uh, bands changes. Okay, so uh, if we uh, so the the the, the chart uh, that advantage is any data set I know which I already said it could be very useful to have this of there's a lot of theory I showed you um, I, I cannot hear you. I'm sharing a new... Um, oh, Google Chrome. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, basically the, the chapter in uh, uh, Big Town, no? And as you can see, there is no... Um, so it talks about the data set that mm, can be used, uh, and so they run an experiment, uh, but in practice, there's no uh, any example. And even if you, when you go forward, uh, there's an um, uh, IQ data set used, uh, which is uh, um, Created at the so I would my 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 opinion is to, that would be very useful to have I even visually uh, like the section with some data uh, and so um, there are uh, as I said as I mentioned. Uh, uh, Different sampling methods that would say that it is random with without replacement. Um, and uh, let, let's go back to where we were. And so we can um, use ggplot, okay, mm -hmm. and have a look at the, for example, testing the density of this. Uh, um, Cholera death distribution. So we, we have this, not the average, but the original data. Uh, and so we have a look at the, the distribution, uh, considering uh, the mean. So I've drawn here the mean and the standard deviation. So as you can see, this, this, uh, this is the, the density distribution. And it is quite fluid on the, uh, on the right. Uh, and so it doesn't appear. Um, uh, it, it, it also appears to be like uh, tending to be in order. Uh, uh, and so, what um, uh, what we can do is even uh, draw an histogram uh, and uh, uh, add um, uh, specified here uh, the type of of water and so these are stacked uh, bars so you can see that within uh, a specific range that I divided the bins by 10 so uh, all the values are divided by 10 so this this within this range uh, the um, new river for example okay this, uh, these are uh, on the x x axis this, um, we have the depth, okay? Uh, and so, um, let's have this And so, it doesn't appear because uh, it is, there is this, um, Five thirty team. 
And so within this range of deaths, uh, for example, which is low compared to other ones, other for example, uh, within this range, uh, uh, we can even specify, okay, have a uh, specified range of entities. But um, range of classes. Uh, so we see that this uh, new river, uh, so the, the location from the, the water come from, uh, it's basically causing uh, the, the most of the death. And so, so but uh, uh, going back to where we were, so this is the uh, basically the, the steward distribution. And to, uh, and we have seen that there is a, a, a mean value and a standard deviation value, which is within uh, zero and five hundred. Okay, so um, in particular, it, it was three hundred and sixty uh, eight point six, uh, and so this is our um, uh, what is it? Our population mean. Okay, if then we do sum. Okay, this uh, and then we have a look at the mean of the sample population, the larger is the sample, the closer is this value to the origin. And we see this in particular following the book uh, with a new uh, type of data, which is the IQ data. And they have basically used this R norm function. Uh, and so it throws out um, 10,000 IQ values by uh, which uh, they as a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of two. Okay. Okay, this is, is in itself a sample. If we want to do the same discussion that we did before with ggplot, because within the book, as you can see, this uh, is the density, this is the histogram, uh, and this is the sample. Uh, it's, it's a sample. Uh, so what's happened here is uh, that um, they made, uh, okay, you know, uh, that there's some relation about, so they, they made this uh, uh, differencing within sample one, sample two, uh, and sample uh, ten, okay, to see how the distribution changes um, compared to the population density. Okay, so I'm sampling, and this is my original data. I'm sampling, um, and this is the difference with my original density. Okay, and so uh, to, to do this, they, they made a function which is called plot one and this function plot different um, uh, the, uh, sample sizes on uh, a density distribution. So what I'd like to show you is if you want to do this with ggplot, okay, what you, you need to do is to use on Instagram and then the stat function for the density. Okay, so within the 
eh, John Instagram, Nicole uh, Ashley. So, you know, to use uh, this IQ, as you, as you seen, was a vector, okay? Values. So I need a T-board to use this plot, okay? So, and then on the X-axis, this is my uh, T-board, which is my IQ and all the values in this nice format. Uh, and so I use just the X-axis, and if I may, a geom Instagram, just like this. This is my Instagram. Okay, as you can see, these are the IQ values, and this is the count. Okay, the many time certain value appears within uh, our uh, description. Why? If I want to compare this with the density, I cannot do this. Okay, I need to use the y dot dot density dot dot. Um, this is not needed. I think I use Uh, and then um, you need this function, the start function. I'm sure you know. Yeah. This function, basically, what does is drawing a function as a continuous curve. Okay, so. Um, it's it's very useful to to put on top of an existing plot. Okay, but so uh, this is all all good. But if I if my density um it's a, a normal distribution. Okay, I think I. Uh, for example, if you if I have this vector, okay, and inside this is my I, okay, I should have said that. Okay, before I want to show you, if I uh, then uh, want to have um, basically the, uh, I need the, the, the distribution, okay? Uh, I can use the denoid function, okay? So I this and then the denoid, which, um, as for mean and the standard deviation, the mean is the mean of IQ, and the standard deviation is the standard deviation of IQ. Okay, so okay, this will be my new uh, information. Okay, this is the, uh, my density distribution. Okay, and I uh, say that my IQ uh, has a density distribution, which is a normal uh, distribution. So as you can see, these values are uh, quite lower than this other one. Okay. So, yeah. so it could be said that the value in this is the position in the distribution plot, right? Yeah, but in practical terms, 
when okay. I so this is my Instagram mm -hmm. with the that now where well, now I specify y equals to that. So a, a simple um Instagram in this case as I shown uh before I can even use the X okay if I uh, make an Instagram of this can, I can do the Instagram, okay? So I have the IQ values on the x-axis and the y-axis I have the count. Mm -hmm. If I want to compare this with a normal distribution, which I have just uh, um, specified here, and these are, uh, if, if I ever look at the, Summary. This goes from forty one to one hundred and sixty five. Why my my probability value distribution are from zero to one in general. Okay, so this is a quite lower value. So okay, so in terms of uh, drawing a line, which is a normal distributed. Uh, uh, set of values um, that ranges within 0 and 1, I cannot do it here because my count goes from 0 to uh, 1,250. Okay. So what I need to do is instead of using my IQ value, I use the density value. Okay, what are the density values? If I uh, if I do then uh, okay. IQ IQ okay. So these are these are the original values, and these are the, the, the density values. Okay, so to compare, these are uh, can be matched com uh, compared with my normal distribution. Just here, by any, maybe not. So basically, I use this uh, normal distribution because um, I want to compare the density of my data with a normal distribution to see if they if it is a normal distributed as well. Okay, so I created some data which are normally distributed and have the mean the mean of my da original data and standard deviation the standard deviation of my population, okay? But my data in itself has a density, so as a, a type of distribution, which I'm not sure which one can be a beta, can be a normal distribution, can be an exponential, can be a, a different from, from a normal distribution. So uh, uh, in terms of graphics, you need to uh, uh, call the geom Instagram with y equals to the density of your population. Okay, so now we have a look at this. Just as the same as before, but now our y axis ranges from zero to one. So, okay, less than one in this case, the value. Yeah, and so we can see that this is a normal distribution, more or less. It's normal distributed, but we want like line. Oh, no. uh, cube with a normal distribution to to compare them, compare it. So, so we use the stat function to draw the line. Uh, the function is a denorm, so I'm not using 
I can I could even use this keyboard here that we just created. But I'm not I'm not I'm not doing that. I'm just creating inside this as function. So I use a function denorm to make um uh, uh, normal distributed values with mean uh my population mean with standard deviation my standard deviation deviation population mean. And so finally I don't know why it says maybe it's this D line and the text case with this. And so now uh this is the normal distribution. This is the mean, the population mean. And so we can see uh, uh obviously we assign the same mean. Okay. But then is the central living theorem uh get into uh uh so we to to use to in the demonstration of the central limit theorem, we need a sample. Okay, this is normal distributed. Okay, but uh, um, okay. So if it wasn't normal distributed, okay, we could um, uh, take a larger sample, larger enough to meet a normal distribution. And then, if we have a look at the mean of this uh, larger sample, the, this mean value would be the closest value to, the, to our population. Yeah, is that clear? Yeah. Oh, well, good. Okay, so and uh, what's happened is that um, we use some uh, estimator to do that. So our um, uh, standard deviation would be now uh, a standard error. Okay, standard error, which is the sigma divided by the square root of of uh, the number of observations in my population, the original data. And then I'm going to estimate the parameters using um, some transformation. This is the variance, and this is the estimator of the variance with a little modification. And so, using this estimator of the variance, I can retrieve the estimator of the standard deviation. And uh, here is I, uh, uh, summary of what's happening. Uh, and so, if I then uh, use uh, do you know about this formula? But this is basically a formula used to calculate the confidence intervals. There are, um, uh, so I have a mean and I have a standard deviation as I show um, in mm -hmm. my. This is the bean. Uh, I can draw the standard deviation. Uh, and the confidence intervals are uh, basically the, uh, the minimum and the maximum value of a range within my uh, my mean value to the central value to the central value. 
So Um, it took us, you know, in order to calculate this um, uh, um, confidence interval, we usually uh, use um, a formula, uh, which is um, which is basically uh, the mean um, minus this is about two times the standard error. And the mean plus two times the standard error. This two is uh, um, the value, uh, which is the, basically the value that you retrieve in the table of the normal distribution, uh, plugging in. Um, so it's uh, the value in the y. -axis. So this is basically a value that is, it is standard, that you always use this or approximate about this. And uh, basically uh, say that uh, uh, the, our um, sample mean, so the one that we uh, calculate on the uh, Sample population, sample population. Um, if the sample is large enough, will be uh, observed, so will be within 1.96 standard errors of the away from the position, will be within this range. And so we uh, but, uh, if imagine we don't we don't know the mean of our population, we can eventually estimate the mean of the population with this reverse formula. And so the confidence interval at the extreme is range. The lower part. Uh, so this is uh, basically a bit of like an introduction because uh, there will be much more, but it's it's almost it. And um, uh, that's that's all I've got.